What up all, Darp here from Miles Productions, continuing, actually technically finishing Fez. First playthrough anyway. This is the 297-8%, something like that. Anyway, this is, uh, this is the 16 cube door. We have 31 cubes of the 32 we need to finish. We'll be getting the final one here. It's an anti-cube, spoilers. And, um, collecting some bits. So, actually, I believe, uh, there are quite a few things in this city area. You want to check in all the doors, make sure everything's good and got... Um, aside from the anti-cube that I told you about, there's also a key and, I believe, four bits. Maybe five. Four or five bits. You know, somewhere in that ballpark range. So, yeah. There's a weird little bug there. Anyway, we're going to go through every single room here in the city. Because there's stuff in them. Possibly. Not everything. There's stuff in most rooms. Alright, so this is one of the big important rooms in the game. One of the weird puzzles. So, first get your bit. There it is. Got bit. Um, you can see, kind of briefly, there's a, a code. Tetris code on the wall there. There's another throne room in the scientific zone. And you're supposed to write both of the codes down, combine them, and you get this super long code here. Now here's the thing. Putting in this code here actually deactivates a, another code. There's a QR code that you can scan with your phone. And it'll bring up a website with um, a Tetris code that you're supposed to input into the game. Super complex. Surprisingly complex, actually. Um, but if you get this... This anti-cube that, that I just picked up, if you get this one... Then it deactivates that other one. And now it doesn't mean, oh, you're screwed, you're, you can't get the completion. You're still fine, it's just kind of an either-or deal. You pick which one you want to do. So I chose to do the throne room since I knew it already. But... To be, all, to be honest with you, the QR code is a lot easier. You can see they're completing a QR code. And here's our uh, key. There's all kinds of weird symbols. I don't know if these symbols actually mean anything or what's going on there. They're very strange. They probably foretell the, uh, I don't know, end of days. Maybe it's the beginning of days. Maybe it's how all this began. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a Fezian. I'm a Fezzer. Sorry. Went on a tangent in my own head. Uh, sorry. We'll get back to the game now. We've got our bits. We got our 32 cubes. Honestly, as soon as you're ready, um, you're good to go into the giant door. Giant 32 cube door. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one last bit just so I don't have to worry about it in the second playthrough. Five. We collected five bits, this game just told me. Man, notes are not doing me any good right now. So, once you got everything, once you're satisfied with life, head on to the big old door. If I can find it. There it is. Now, this is a point of no return. If you enter this door, you cannot come back out of it. So, make sure you've done everything you want to. I have, for this first playthrough anyway. So stand on up here. Talk to uh, your little thing. And this will start to happen.
takes it a minute, but uh, it does something important at least. It's the moon! So here we are on the Fezian moon, I think. Looks like a moon. Fighting every urge to make a wizard joke there. So, um... This is super easy. All you have to do is climb on up, and you're done with the game. That's it. Beat it. Done. Cool. You'll get trophy, the kill screen trophy for beating it, but we are only halfway done. We have a lot more to do. So, have fun with your low gravity jumping here, and I will see you in the next video when we get down to some serious collecting business. So I'll see you there. Peace out. What up all, Darp here from Mindless Productions, continuing Fez, the everything guide. Alright, so this video covers the Lighthouse Zone. It's actually a pretty simple little zone. In fact, about half this video is going to be spent just in this first little room. So go ahead and get cozy, so we'll be here for a minute. First thing we're going to do, oh, I should say, this area has uh, two bits, two anti-cubes, and one map in it. The two anti-cubes are both tied to codes. First one right here. Um, if you go into first person, you have to go into first person and have the water lowered in this area, which if you followed my guide, we did that a while ago. If not, go back and check uh, the giant waterfall area. I think it's video, I think it's part one. We deal with it. But anyway, go into first person mode, take a look at the dock and you'll see the code. Simple as that. Well, you'll see the Tetris blocks that make up the code, but y you know what I mean. Alright, and using the power of flight, we're going to gather up our two bits here. Makes life a lot easier. And actually, uh, this second playthrough is going to go by pretty quickly. A lot quicker than the first one did. Just because we have flight, we can skip past most of the puzzles, most of the platforming, most of the trouble. Uh, which 
you know, may seem like cheating, but hey, it's easier. So, there you go. That's my solution. Simple solutions to complex problems. It's That's not really what I do. I'm, I'm not very good at that, but that's what I try to do. It's what I aim for, you know, it's, it's the goals that count. Alrighty, so this very, very bottom door is the tuning fork room for this area. If you don't remember how these tuning fork rooms go, you'll feel the vibration in your controller, or if you don't have vibration, you can just check out the code here. Um, and you just have to match up the vibrations with the button presses. Pretty simple thing. And that's our second anti-cube. Nice and easy. Right there. And that's actually, uh... I have made a mistake, I do apologize. There are three anti-cubes in this video. Uh, I said before there were only two. I forgot we went into that tuning fork room. I thought that was in the next video. So, um, ju that's just, that's more good news for you. More stuff, more bonus, bonus things. I'm repeating myself. I do apologize if I'm sounding kind of manic now. I'm, uh... <laughs> You know, just a wee bit sleep deprived at the moment. Do apologize. Hope it doesn't ruin your enjoyment of these videos. I like how there's this huge long room and all that's in here is one bit. That's just, it's kind of disappointing, you know? Get to the top thinking, oh yeah, made it up to the top of this tall room. Gotta be something good. Nope, just a just a bit. Just one eighth of a cube is all they can muster up for me. Alright, so this is the water tower room up here. It's actually not not too bad of an area. There's not a whole lot here. This actual water tower room, this main hub wow, I died. I, w I look down to look at my notes and I'm dead. That's just terrible. Uh, this first area just has one bit and two anti-cubes in it. Actually, that's wrong. It has one anti-cube. I tied the uh, I tied things differently here. My notes are a little screwy, but um, there's definitely one bit. There's only one. Anyway, this uh, this is the owl room. It has nothing to do with the four owls we've been talking to, except that there's a giant owl in the room. That's about it. So, if you go into... That is a big owl. Look at that fat fuck. He's a big owl. Anyway, the, the code can be found just going to first person mode. I think it's behind the owl, if I remember right. I could remember wrong. I don't know. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's behind him. But anyway, code is around here. Just go into first person mode to find it. And there is your anti cube, the last anti cube. Yeah, the last anti cube. Alrighty, so this, uh, heading into the water tower here, very simple, but this actually connects us to the next zone, which is the industrial zone, which is a huge pain, and there's a very good reason why I saved it for the second playthrough. Oh, and, uh, these little doors, you may notice a couple of these around. All of them bring you to, uh, that main waterfall hub, so if you're for some reason near one of these secret doors and happen to have a reason to go to the waterfall hub there you go it's all they, they thought of that 
they they planned ahead for you. All right, so I'm uh, I'm officially trashing my notes here. It's our fourth anti cube in the video. I promised two originally, then I promised three. I was wrong about both. I do apologize for that. Um, that will be fixed by next video. Anyway, this is the industrial zone. And that's it for the video. As always, questions, comments, concerns, which you may have quite a few in this one. I apologize for all the mistakes. But questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next video. So, peace out, y'all. What up all, Darp here from Mindless Productions. Continuing Fez, the complete everything guide. And I'm dead. Okay. So this is uh, the graveyard zone. Clearly. Alright, so this is actually going to be the last zone we deal with in our first playthrough. And I won't be doing everything in this zone quite yet. I'll be doing quite a bit of it, but not everything. So, uh, I've made a little list here of everything I collect. In this main graveyard area, I collect seven bits, which I think there's nine total. So, I collect most of them. There are a couple I miss. Um, and then we'll be collecting some things in a couple extra rooms. But uh, the big thing is that I'm just getting the 32 cubes that I need. I'm already pretty close to that. And uh, as soon as I get my... Actually, I end up with 31. And then in the next video, I'll get the final cube just before the ending of the game. So, um, so I'm getting 31 cubes total in this video. Alright, so this this main warp area is, is kind of boring. Sorry about that, it's just the nature of it. However, this new warp area is good. It's getting closer to our trophy. We Actually, I think we only need one more, now that I think about it. Or no, two more. We need two more. Alright, so I'm going to leave you to enjoy this. Uh, we've got one small puzzle coming up that I will explain to you. And uh, it's really about it. There's, It's just finishing it out here, honestly. So uh, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Alright, so it wasn't actually that far away, but um, this is our little puzzle room-ish. So there are three bits here, first off, that's the important bit, important stuff. The puzzle in this room is you need to rotate all of the tombstones to face the same direction. So we've got two, I rotated the one there.
And I don't believe it matters exactly which direction, just so long as they're all facing the same direction. Um, I have mine facing the door we came in, because that made sense in my head. Oh, look at that. Another full cube. Alright, and the final one up here. Just need to rotate around. One more. There it is. Alright, so that reveals the door. The door's got a uh, an anti cube. Yes, has an anti-cube. I had to check my notes on that. It's a terrible memory. Yep, yeah, one anti-cube in here. Jump on the invisible platforms. Also, if you didn't notice, if you're impatient like me and don't want to wait on the lightning, you can actually see where the platforms are by the rain drops hitting it. You can kind of see it there on the screen. Uh, that's the easiest way of finding them. Alright, so with that, take the warp on back. And, God, we are so close. We are almost done. So we're going to head into this wooden door here. And this actually is, the well, this next room is kind of the main area for the next... Oops, sorry, Mike. It's kind of the main area for the last five, five rooms? Yeah, five rooms. Um, but it also has just enough for us to finish out our first playthrough so here in these extra rooms we're gathering seven total bits and two full cubes so that's really about it um you will notice um i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and leave y'all to enjoy the rest of the video um you'll notice as soon as i get my 31 cubes I take off so um, just in case it's a little too fast to follow I don't think it will be but you know for some people it may be all I'm doing is heading straight back to the waterfall hub so that's all you need to really know you can make your way back there however you want but that's how you need to do it so like I said I'll leave you to enjoy the rest as always questions comments concerns let me know in the comments below um, that's it. Yeah. All right. See you in the next video. Peace out, y'all.
What up all, Darp here from Honest Productions, continuing Fez, the ultimate guide to fezzing. We are here in the industrial zone. This is a two-parter. This first part will be covering the windmill area and everything connected to it, and the... I don't know what else to call it, but platform-ish area. It's also got a small windmill to it. I don't know. Second windmill? That's just confusing. Anyway, this first little area, if you want to go ahead and head into the small rooms, there are two bits available. There are a bunch of other side rooms uh, here in this main warp gate area, but uh, I'll be doing I'll be dealing with all those in the next video. This video, I'm just collecting the two bits in each of the little houses here. Uh, but in the windmill and the platforms, I will be getting everything, so don't worry. Uh, and I'll be getting the rest of the stuff here in the next video. It should have been obvious, but, you know, whatever. Alright, and so we're going to head to the windmill. If I can figure out where it is. There it is, okay. So... Go in the windmill. What am I doing? Alright, little delayed. Sorry about that. Anyway, here in the windmill zone, we have three bits, one full cube, and an owl. The third of four owls. We've almost got them. All this owl hunting better be worth it. Spoilers, it's not really. Alright, so collect your bits here. Like I said, there are three bits total. Boom, there they are. You will need a key. If you don't have a key, uh, come back to this area. You should have plenty if you've been following my guide. And this thing... God, this thing's a pain to deal with. Alright, so here, so you can kind of go through my thought process. I'm trying to debate on how much time I have before uh, nighttime, for nightfall. And dying is part of the thinking process, of course. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, you know, it's about to get dark. Kind of just hang out here for a little bit. But uh, it actually turns out it's going to be quite a while. And now this area is the platform-ish zone I mentioned. Um, not that we'll be really dealing with it right now, but just so you have a visual on what we're, uh, what I'm talking about. Alright, so it's at this point I'm realizing... That was a burp. Apologize. It's at this point I am realizing that, uh... We're still quite a ways from Nightfall. So let's go ahead and knock out this little... Little room here. So right there is our full cube I mentioned earlier. You can see some of the bits as we spin around. Boom, and that's another full cube. We are just sailing through this. We already got 40 cubes. Or 39 cubes, if I can do math. I was never very good at math, so, you know. Alright, so and that's it for that room. Like I said, it was a very small room. 
And look at that, we're outside just in time for the owl to stop by. Alright, Al's taken care of, let's head on to the platforms. Again, these platforms aren't anything super tricky or anything. Well, they're not tricky since we can fly. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I guess I should explain... Or, not should, I will explain. Eventually. Sorry, um... Reason why I chose to skip this on my first playthrough, mainly those turning platforms. Not not the one I'm turning now, but uh, y you've seen them at this point. There are platforms that'll automatically spin, and uh, I can barely comprehend this whole switching 2D planes thing that this game does. I can barely deal with it when I'm in control of it. I'm not gonna let the game take control. That's just that's no. It's not going to happen. Alright, oh, and I... God, I completely forgot. This is the platforms area, so... There are a list of things. We have five total bits, which we already collected a couple. And that full cube that we just collected. Sorry about that, I was a little behind the ball. Alright, so for this puzzle, you have to die. That's step one, obviously. And see, I just did it there, you know, just reiterate. So you want to line up both sides of this little cube thing. You want to try and find uh, the inner cube has an open doorway. Try and find it, line it up with the opening on the outer ring cube th thing. There we go. And now actually from this position, and we are just turned to the right of the main door. Uh, you just turn everything right once and there's the door we're looking for. That sounded kind of confusing listening back to it. Um... I hope it made sense. You saw what happened. Alright, so let's cover this uh, last little room here. This is another one that has a, a weird... I don't know. You have to do more than you're actually rewarded for. That, that doesn't make sense. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm working hard turning this crank, and all I get is one bit for it. Just seems a little off to me. That's just me. I'm very lazy, so turning a virtual crank by pressing a button. It's a lot of work to me. And uh, not a whole lot of reward to go with it, unfortunately. But anyway, that's pretty much the entire platform area taken care of. Uh, I'm going to head back in and use the warp gates. As always, questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. Uh, I know I've been a little bit confusing in this video. And the last one, honestly. Strange times here. Anyway. Questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video. So, peace out, y'all.
what up all, Darp here from Mons Productions, continuing Fez, the, I don't have a catchy title for it this time, 100%, 200%, 209% walkthrough. We're collecting everything. Anyway, this is the Industrial Zone Part 2. Uh, if you didn't see the video last time, we covered basically everything in the Industrial Zone, except for this main Industrial Warp area and a couple of its connecting rooms um so we collected two bits in the last video in this area we're going to collect three more bits a full cube and a map all in this video and then we're going to head to the next zone so that's cool So, because this is our second playthrough, we are able to fly past pretty much everything in these areas. Because there's actually some very tricky platforming going on here. Uh, you have to be pretty decent feather to, uh, to do these. I'm not very good at it, as I just demonstrated. Oh no, I saved it. I saved it. We're good. Alright, so there's two bits. I think I just collected a bit beforehand, actually. Or, if not, then I'll be collecting another bit here in a moment. Oh, no, I haven't collected the bit yet. I really ought to pay attention, huh? Sorry. Alright, focus. Game time. Let's do this. All right, and there's our full cube. God, we are just flying through these cubes. Look at that. One more bit and we've got, what, 40, 42 cubes? All righty, so we got, uh, I believe just one more door to go through here. Yep, this is the uh, final door in that main industrial hub area. Again, a lot of tricky platforming here. Look at that, there's another bit, another cube. And then off to one side, currently my right side. I'm gonna go to the left because I'm stupid, but uh, you wanna go to the right. Don't be me, kids. It's not good. Do as I say, not as I do, or however that goes. Yep, so you can see it. On up there is our treasure chest. Inside will be our map piece. Or our... Say map piece. It's a, it's a map. We got another bit over here on the little... Uh, little corkscrew looking thing. Oh, almost missed that jump. That would have been tragic. God, you know, I never realized how confusing this area is to anyone not playing the game. This is a very elaborate area. Alright, so I had to check the map real quick. You may notice, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, you may notice a lot of, uh, a lot of weird cuts and stuff. You know, in the middle of what seems to be just normal going gameplay. I'm checking the map a lot, that's all that is. Um, I've mentioned this a couple times, but the map is very, very handy when trying to figure out if you've collected every little detail. So that that's that's all I'm doing. Just 
making sure I got everything, making sure this is a comprehensive Fez guide for all you Fezzers. There we go. I knew I was missing something there. There's a bit. And I uh, believe that does it, actually. I think that's... Yeah, looks like that's everything in the industrial zone. Yep, every little thing. So, we are going to... We're not heading over there. That's not where we're going. And we're, not, we're definitely not going up there yet. We're actually going to be heading down. Way down. We're headed to the sewer zone next. So, I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of this video. It is just getting to the sewer zone. Uh, and it's not like it's super tricky or anything. Just so that you know the path. So, uh, as always, questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, guys. What up all, Darp here from Honest Productions, continuing Fez, the ultimate guide to the Fezian world. We're collecting everything, is what that means. So, this is the sewer zone, the entirety of the sewer zone. And in this sewer zone, we have nine bits, three anti-cubes, two regular cubes, and a key. One key, just one. Uh, oh, and with those anti-cubes, two of them are tied to codes. One of them is actually tied to two different codes. I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, but then one of them you get for just completing an area. So, right off the bat we grabbed a, a, a bit and a key. So that's good. There are a lot of rooms in the sewer zone. Or a lot of doors, I should say. Um, which, which I guess would translate to a lot of rooms. 
But anyway, it can get very confusing trying to uh, sort out where you've been and where you need to go and uh, trying to find the doors. So how I recommend you do it is just start on one side, go through every door on that one side, and then head to the next area or head to the next tower. Uh, here in this this main hub is what I'm talking about. Uh, head to the next tower, do all the doors there, and so on. That's that's honestly the best way of dealing with it. Even doing that, I end up confused quite often, but uh, it helps, you know. Any little thing to help. Alright, so there's you, uh, there's one of the full cubes. Oh yeah, and uh, don't touch the green liquid. I don't know what it is, I don't know why it's green, but don't touch it. I mean, not like I'm one to tell you what to do, right? Alright, um, I guess I should mention, uh, um, th the way I'm handling the sewer zone, I mean, I kind of mentioned it before, but the way I'm handling the sewer zone means the lava areas, which, if you're looking for the specific rooms, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, just enjoy the video, you're fine. Stay right there. But if you're looking for just the lava rooms, which are the trickiest rooms... Uh, in this area, probably in the game, you know, they're pretty tricky areas. They are at the tail end of this video, starting about the 8-ish minute mark. It's a good place to start looking. Uh, maybe even just before that. So, if that's what you're looking for, there it is. Anyway, continuing on, uh, this is one place you definitely want to make sure you collect every little bit before carrying on. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a lot of backtracking, and this place is confusing enough. You don't want to have to backtrack. Alright, so right up here is our second cube, I think. No, it's a key. A second key. Oh, that means my notes are wrong again. I hope not too bad. Sorry. That is terrible of me. I'm so glad I'm not technically professional. Or I would be fired. So that's two keys down. That should be it for keys, though, I think. No promises. I've got my cubes right, though. I did the math on that. I mean, I know I've mentioned before I'm not too good at it, but hey. Alright, so this is the first tuning fork. There are two tuning forks in this, uh, in this zone. Oops, sorry Mike. So this is the first one. Real simple code. I actually really like the tuning forks. They're nice, simple little codes compared to the rest of this game. Some of these get ridiculous. There's one that you have to translate into... Like, uh, you gotta translate it into a programming language, and then from there translate it into binary or something like that. It's ridiculous. This game can get kind of, kind of crazy. Alright, so remember how I said I get lost? Uh, case in point. Plus it doesn't help, you can't see very well. This is just a... It's kind of a tricky area. Okay, so yeah, that's our second cube. Thought for a second I had my cubes wrong too. No, cubes are right. 
That is our second cube there. So, cool. All of our regular cubes are knocked out. Our keys are done, I hope. We've just got two anti cubes and our bits. The rest of the bits, not too many left. Ugh. Alright, so this room is kind of special. If you didn't do the code in the throne room before, like I did, then you want to enter the code that I just had up there. You want to enter that here. Uh, there'll also be a giant QR code standing up in the background. But because I did the throne room code, the QR code is not here. That's I said code a lot of times there, I'm sorry. I hope that made sense. Whoa, that was close. Man, you know, the flying thing is a lot of fun. Too bad he canceled Fez too, I mean... If he had gone on with that flying thing and just made it part of the main game, could have been kind of fun. Alright, so this is the room that leads us to the sewer... I think they call it sewer hell. Uh, it's the lava rooms. First off, put in this Tetris code. It's just a very straightforward code. Inside will be our second tuning fork. Oh, and there's another one of those little secret doors. Leads you back to the waterfall room if you're wanting to do that kind of thing, you know. Uh, okay, oh, no, I'm sorry. This is the uh, lava room. This, this door here takes us to the tuning fork. So just float on up here. Now, I should note, you don't have to stand on top of this tuning fork. I do it because it's quicker. Uh, but you don't, you don't have to. I mean, if you felt pressured to do it or something, you don't, don't, don't worry about it. Alright, so that anti cube's down. We got one anti cube left to go, and that'll be at the very, very end. Uh, and I died. Go me. Oh, oh. too high. Okay, so head back out to this main room, and uh, we can fly. So this room is super, super easy. Oh, and don't touch these weird. Uh, things or yeah that'll happen and it doesn't actually kill you it's just kind of a pain to deal with so anyway this room uh the lava down at the very bottom is slowly filling up it doesn't matter we can fly but uh you know if you can't fly this is a very very tricky room and i recommend you wait until you can fly before doing it that's just you know my tip from my experience it's the easy way there's our last anti cube. That actually will do it for the sewer zone. All done. We're going to head off to a uh, scientific zone next, actually. Kind of a cool and tricky place. So, as always, questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Peace out, y'all. Paul Darp here from Islands Productions, continuing Fez. And this, this is the Graveyard Zone. Oh, this is the 100%, um, 209.4% walkthrough. I almost forgot that. Anyway, we're not doing the Graveyard Zone yet. That was a little bit of a fake out there. No, that was actually a bit of a screw up there. No, we are going to the final place to get our final warp zone, actually. 
Uh, this is the final big area we have yet to visit. The scientific zone has some of the trickiest puzzles in the game for sure. Uh, but don't worry, I am here to solve all of the puzzles and collect all the bits in the cubes and the whatnots. So this is the big tree, we've been through this, we've done all this. Alright, up here. Uh, I could not remember if I had put in a code yet or not. I did, actually, it turns out, and I even mentioned it before. Uh, but in case I forgot, there you go, that was the code. And right up here is the treasure chest. You get a map piece. It's actually a QR code. Um, I forget what you use it for. It's one of the QR rooms you need it, but I don't remember. Okay, so this is the, uh, well, it's not quite the scientific zone yet. This is the giant throne. has nothing to do with those small throne rooms we uh, used before. You know, where we put in the long codes and all that. No, this has nothing to do with that. It's just a big statue. Some weird looking dude sitting on a chair. Because that's what ancient people do. They got nothing better to do with themselves. They just chisel out giant dudes sitting in chairs. Man, I think that'd be awesome. Just have a giant statue of me sitting in this desk. No, that would be terrible. Anyway, this is uh, our first any cube of the area. Boom, there it is. I guess I forgot to mention the uh, the throne room actually has three bits total, which I already collected two. It's not right. Yeah, something like that. There's three bits. I collect three bits in this uh, in this video. I apologize. Yeah, see, there's a third bit. Not crazy yet. So there we go. Full cube. And that's it for the bits for this video, actually. For this entire first video, at least. I forget, this is a two-parter. So, on top of the three bits here in the throne room, we also have two anti-cubes. We just collected one. Here is the other. This is a weird little puzzle. So, uh... You'll notice in the background all the different forms. That's the different ways you can unfold a six-sided cube, which cubes are six-sided. That's why they're cubes. Anyway, um, you have to position the blocks to form the final way to unravel a cube. And it's not a, it's not a very difficult puzzle, really. It's just, you know, just kind of a thing. One thing you do need to watch out for is do not rotate to the right at all. Don't do it. Uh, one of the blocks that starts out in front, and, you know, seems perfectly fine, is actually positioned kind of strangely. And if you turn to the right, it'll screw everything up and, you know, make everything too, uh, not too complex, but just make things more complex. And y you really don't need that in this kind of game. Or I don't, anyway. So there you go. That was your anti-cube. Throne room, done, complete. We're golden, and I die. <sighs> anyway, head back into the throne. We'll make our way into the scientific zone proper. That's the proper area of the scientific zone. So here is the ancient city. The city does have quite a few things in it. But uh, we're not going to worry about that in this video. We're going to take care of all that later. For now, we're going to head into this little door here that takes us to the observatory. Now, this is where puzzles... There are two puzzles here in the observatory that are... Well, one of them's not too tricky. The, um, we'll get to it. <laughs> I can't think properly. I can't strength strength think Ugh, I can't talk either man this is not going well for me is it all right so first things first before you even head into the observatory gather up this uh, full cube this place has one full cube 
one any cube and a red cube one of those special red cubes that are all the rage in Paris these days or something like that so we got our cube in here we'll get the any cube and the red cube now what you're supposed to do is uh, turn this telescope around and uh, you'll you'll find patterns up in the sky so first off you'll see Tetris blocks up in the sky they end up making this code that's how you get your any cube now the next code is a lot trickier to get and I will admit I had to uh, get some help to figure it out you actually have to you'll look out there and there's a certain pattern um, in the sky that trans you have to translate it into I think it's I'm trying to remember right it, it, it's translated to binary code and then into a programming language that I don't have any clue about and then from there you'll be able to get your rights and lefts and oh geez sorry Mike so yeah it's a, it's a super complex deal and uh, I'll admit it I had to have some help I had some helping hands on that one people who had already done it and who knew what to do so uh sorry that strategy is not mine but anyway you got your red cube everything's done in the observatory so we continue on to the temple it's a temple pretty straightforward I'd say so first off big old cube sitting right there that is the final cube we need there's also an artifact and an anti-cube here plus we will talk to our final owl so we can finally finish all that up so careful dropping down here I thought there was a ledge I was wrong so like I said careful dropping down there Now, here in uh, the scientific zone, it's it's kind of hard to tell when it's nighttime. Like, right now it looks like nighttime. No, this is daytime. It, 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 it's weird. It looks weird. So, while we wait for nighttime, head on into this room to collect an artifact. It's very easy to get to. No real puzzle here. And this will actually get you... A trophy. Actually, this is our second trophy of the video. I forgot to mention our first one. Uh, you'll get the warp zone trophy for entering this area because this is our final warp zone to unlock. And you also just unlocked the um, mightier than no, not mightier than the sword. This is the uh, numbers game trophy. All right, and I made it out just in time for the owl to show up. So talk to him. That is all done. We are almost done with this. This is this is about it. So you can head on into the tree. And this is the room that I have been talking about for a long time. Way back at the beginning I mentioned there was a room that would translate these Tetris codes for you. Here it is. You can see every button you press. Uh, changes the lights up there so use that to translate this stone tablet and get the final anti cube of the video and with that we are done i will see you uh well as always questions comments concerns feel free to let me know down in the comments otherwise i will see you in the next video as we finish up the scientific zone so peace out y'all What up, Paul Darp here from Alice Productions, and this is Fez. The complete comprehensive walkthrough. Alright, so we're finishing up the scientific zone here. We're, main ba we're back in the uh, main hub, if I could talk properly. Look at that, there's another secret door there. So, 
here at the main uh, warp area, there are six total bits we'll be collecting in various rooms throughout. And there's also one map, but we'll be getting that at the end of the video. Hey, and if you haven't done it already, if you passed up all the opportunities so far, this is the final chance to put in the throne code room, or throne code, to get an Annie cube. I have already done so, so I will not be getting the cube here. But there you go. That's the second throne room. So the beginning of this video is just going to be me running around collecting bits. Like I said, there are six of them here in this uh, main area. Do not worry about this QR code. It apparently does nothing. Uh, I've, at least nothing I've ever found. If, if you found something, please let me know. I, I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, I don't think it does anything. I don't think there's any purpose to it. Alright, so you can see the treasure chest way up there at the top. That, uh, that has the map in it. But like I said, I'll be getting that later because I am stupid and left it behind. If you want to, go ahead and grab it. I, in fact, I recommend you go ahead and grab it, but we'll be passing by here soon enough anyway. It's not a big deal. So, just like in the main village you started out in, be sure you check every single door. I think there are a couple of them that are empty, but, you know, just double check everything. Make sure everything is clear. Hate to miss out. Or at least, hate to not fill in every room. Highlight every room gold on your map. That kind of thing. That door there leads off to the clock tower, I believe. Which is something... Oh, God, that is, uh, that is a huge pain that we will have to deal with. We'll be dealing with that towards the end of the video. Alright, and this is a broken 32 cube door. Uh, there's nothing special. There are two special in here. There are two bits, but that's about it. Oh yeah, careful of black holes. Uh, remember those are a thing in this game? Yeah, it took two deaths for me to learn that. And splash down in the water. You're good to go, that's all our bits. Let's carry on, we're actually gonna head... Where are we going? We are going, actually we are going to the clock tower next. Cause that's the only place to go, only place we have left to go. But we are not going to be dealing with the main puzzle there. There's a huge puzzle tied around the clock tower and, as I'm sure you can imagine, time is of the essence, is actually a, a huge part in this, uh, in this puzzle. So, go ahead and float straight on up to the top and grab the full cube up here. Just so you have an idea of what I'm thinking here, I'm trying to find the door that goes to the uh, library that is in the background there. Yeah, it's just down here at the bottom. It's, it's not super complex. It's just above the entrance. I, just, I got a little lost there. Apologize for any inconvenience it may have caused. But I'll make it up to you here. We're going to get us a trophy here in the library. And uh, on top of that, we get two bits. So, you know, not a bad deal. Oh, uh, 
I guess I should mention the trophies for an artifact. We're gonna get an artifact hidden in this library. Just rotate 180 and then press square if you're on PlayStation. If you're on anything else, uh, I know Xbox, it's X, I think. Yeah. PC, uh, I don't know. I don't know PC controls. Sorry, haven't played it. Haven't played this on PC at least. So anyway, rotate the globe around once, you will find the cube. Rotate around 180 from there. And you will come across a door. Well, actually you'll get a cube, and then you'll come across a door. And inside this door is... A secret study. But you know what, this, this is really weird. It's a secret study inside of a secret library. It's very, very weird setup. Someone is very protective of their books, as they should. Knowledge is power, don't you know? Yeah, so when, when you're all done here, just head on back outside. And we will deal with the most annoying, not difficult, just most annoying puzzle in this game. Here's a hint, it's back at that clock tower. Okay, so I'm gonna try and explain this as well as I can in my current stupor, in my constant stupor. Every hand of this clock represents an any cube, actually. And you can see based on what side you're on, it changes color, so uh, I'll be popping up here in just a second. The red side is set for every minute. And when it hits noon, and when it hits 12 up there at the top, a cube will appear. So, you can kind of you can kind of see where this is going to go. The hand will disappear once you grab the cube, so you know you've got it. You don't have to worry. So, Easiest way to handle this is just go into your system settings and manually set your date or manually set your time, sometimes date. I managed to luck out and I had the blue cycle and the green cycle time out at the same time. The blue cycle, as you saw, is set is uh, cycled every hour. The green is every day. So all that's left is the gray, which is set to an annoying two day cycle. Yeah, it's a two-day cycle. So anyway, after some trial and error, and it is trial and error, uh, there's no exact times. Every time I've gone through this, it's been different. So it's, it's just trial and error. Just, you know, work at it until you get it. That's, that's about the only tip I can give you there. But with that done, the scientific zone has been cleared, has been conquered... We are all done. As always, questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video where we finish out... Well, really, where we finish out everything. We collect the final bits of everything. So I will see you there. Peace out, y'all. What up all, Darp here from Miles Productions, basically finishing up Fez, the complete and thorough professional walkthrough that this has been. 
so we're headed back to the graveyard. Uh, we're actually going to make our way through the big tree. Turns out I had skipped a couple, uh, couple things. Professional. Um, there's actually a door in this room that I forgot to go into that I will go into now. So it's actually over here, you can see the little wooden platform there. It's on the back side of, uh, of all this here. Yep, there it is. It's a locked door, so if you don't have any keys, you should have keys, you should be fine. Luckily, there's not too much in here. There is one qubit and a chest up at the very top with a map, a map that we will need this video. I'm finally gonna show you the purpose of all these maps we've been getting. But that's that's towards the end of the video. For now, just make your way on back. And we're going to head into the graveyard zone, which we had covered a good chunk of it in, our first, in the first playthrough here. But uh, we're, we're going to finish it out. We're going to get everything else. Okay, so you should have everything collected here in the warp zone. In the main warp gate. I mean... Um, and just stay at the bottom. Don't don't fly up like I did. Just stay at the bottom. We're going to go into this very first door down here. This will take us to the secret owl room. So here it is. This is the culmination of all our owl conversations we've been having. So when all four owls show up, secret door opens. Inside is our reward. But first, there's an anti cube. And there's actually a second one on the back side I forgot to get, but we'll get it in a minute. Not a big deal. Or no, it's in this room. It's on the back side of this room, I apologize. Again, professional. And I died. In this very, very simple room. I die. Alright, so there we have it. The mystery of the owls is finished. You've done it. Sherlock would be proud. Now, head on back. We are going to head into the final door in the uh, in this main hub area. Nope, not not that one. Gonna drop down a little bit. There it is. Okay, so I don't know what to call this room. I've been calling it the tombs room in my head and it seems to work out. So that's what I'm gonna call it. These are the tomb rooms. There's, there's a couple rooms here. So in these rooms there are five total bits one map and one artifact. This is the last map and the last artifact in the game. In fact, this is the last bits. This is it. This is everything. We are getting it all. Right here, right now. Let's do it. So you see that locked door? I'm gonna head on in there. We'll be using our very last key. Alright, and this is why we've been collecting maps. Although I did forget a map. I forgot. <laughs> so close. So close. No, there's one map up at the very top. You can see the bottom of the platform. Well, now you can't, but... Anyway, just float straight on up. And there it is. All 
All right, so with the final, final piece of the map, final piece of the puzzle, make your way back on down to that locked door. And we are going to solve the, uh, I don't know what it is. It's, it's a maze, kind of. It's a maze of doors. All right, so I'm going to show you what we've got here. We've got these four maps that look pretty similar here. And you see the two up there in the top corner. So the one in the bottom right corner is our first one. The top left is our second. Bottom middle is our third. And top right is the fourth one. All you really have to do is match up the patterns of the doors on each side of this room. And walk into the highlighted door. And that doesn't really make sense unless you're sitting there playing the game. But uh, you see, this is the second one I had highlighted. This one here. So I need to go into this door right above me. This third door from the top. And it doesn't matter uh, where you come out of is kind of random. So that doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're on the right side going into the door. Now I looked out and ended up on the correct sides all around. Except for this one, this is the one I had to, uh, had to rotate. But you can see, top row full of doors, and it's the second one from the left. Heading on inside, all you have to do now is swim. Just swim over to the right side. And get your final artifact, and... The trophy. Which... Let me check my notes here. I can't pronounce it, so it's a trophy. It's the one for getting the skull artifacts. I, I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that right now. That's that's far above my uh, my IQ level. Okay, so with all the spinning, I kind of got lost on uh, where the exit is. Alright, and that's done. Now, what do we have left to do? We have two little bits to collect, and that's it. And then we are done. We're done. That'd be everything. That's, that's, that is all of everything in this game. That's kind of crazy, actually, thinking about it. No, I'm actually completely wrong. I com I forgot. No, I didn't forget. I got it. No, I'm good. I thought there was still one more cube in the final video. Nope. Nope, I actually knew what I was talking about for once. So here. One bit. Two bit. Red bit. Blue bit. And that is all of them. And that is our 64 cubes. You are going to get two trophies now. This moment, you will get the sum total and the hexahedronaut trophy. I think I pronounced that right. That one's right at my IQ level, so you know it's kind of an iffy, kind of shaky ground there. So that's it. You now have every trophy in Fez. The game is complete. You have done it all. Good work, team. So and double check your map. Make sure you've done everything you'll see there are, there is uh, one room we have not visited yet it's kind of hard to see but it's all it's in the middle of all that we will be going to that room in the next video and i'll explain all that so with that questions comments concerns feel free to let me know down in the comments otherwise i'll see you in the final video so peace out y'all
What up all, Darp here from Minus Productions, and this, this is Fez. This is the final video of, for the 209.4% walkthrough. The complete comprehensive guide, the whatever else I have called it. I've given this thing a thousand names so far. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, this is it. Final video. I'm just popping in for a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you a room that I have not been to yet. We've collected everything, and yet there is one room we have not been to because we could not get to it. It is not here in the lighthouse. It is actually in the um, in the bell tower area. You can see it on the map, kind of. Nope, that's the giant waterfall. There it is, there's our bell tower. Alright, so head on in here. You may remember this room, actually. Um, way back when, in our very first playthrough, when we were first at the bell tower, I stepped in this room and uh, showed you a 64 cube door. Told you we would be coming back here. Well, I did not lie this time. Not like I lie a lot, you know. I, you know. Anyway, it, it's not the most important room in the world. If you don't go in there, it's not going to end anything at all. Uh, you can still carry on with the end of the game if you want to. But I thought this was a special little room, and I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was adorable. So, here we go. Drop down. Yeah, your little buddy will say stuff. Who cares? So here we are. This is the room. Just float your way on up to the top. And you get this cute little heart. You can't collect it. You can't do anything in here. Um, all you can do is just take a screenshot. Have this actual reminder. I died. Are you kidding me? I'm so disappointed in myself. Twice! I've never been so disappointed in myself. That was just terrible. It ruined such a sweet moment, too. <sighs> anyway. That's it. That's Fez. Um, like I was saying, you can take a picture. Because that, that means that you've collected every cube. You've done it all there. Or you can just tell people you got the trophy. Whatever you want to do. I thought it was a cute little room, so I wanted to show it to you. That's it. Uh, just like at the end of the first playthrough, we're gonna head to the end. You'll experience a whole new ending. It'll be greatness. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the guide. Um, I put a lot of effort into this one, a lot of extra effort that I trying some new stuff. So I, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you like some of the changes. Um. Yeah, I guess next time I see you, it'll be in some kind of major release as we get closer to the, the big holiday season. So, as always guys, questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from y'all, it, it really makes my day. Uh, that's it. I will see y'all in the next guide. So, peace out y'all.